Imagine making a living doing what you love. Well, I found a way to do it and so can you. And today we're talking about the top five ways to make reptiles your career. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. Before we start, thank you to today's sponsor, Squarespace. I don't think any of us would argue that doing what we love as a passion, as a hobby, for a living wouldn't be anything short of living the dream. I am so lucky that I get to do this for a living. And you can too. It doesn't have to be this. It could be something totally different. And today we're going over the top five ways I think are the most reasonable for you to make a living with reptiles while still maintaining the best possible care and not exploiting them in any way, shape or form, obviously. It is sad that I even have to say that. Number five, let's just start off with the most obvious one, veterinary. Everything that is a mammal, everything that is a reptile, everything that is a fish, everything that is a plant can get sick. All living things can get sick. So it only makes sense that you're going to need veterinarians, vet techs, uh, x-ray tech, like there's a bunch of different ways that you can make money in the veterinary field from you know the $100,000 plus jobs all the way down to part-time jobs that you learn on the job with no schooling. But let's focus on the two main ones that I could think of off the top of my head. Veterinary technician or veterinary nurse, whatever it's called, basically like a nurse for reptiles, and then a vet, which is a doctor for reptiles. Now these are two different things with two very different pay grades, but I think that if you're someone who doesn't want to spend, what is the number? $200,000 plus on a veterinary degree, you could go to school and become a vet tech for a fraction of that price. But that also means that you're going to make less money. Before we talk about the money, just why you'd want to do this, it's fulfilling. You're literally saving animals' lives but also you are seeing dead animals too. So this is like so morbid. Why did I start off with this one? Just to be totally real here, it is fulfilling. I live with a vet tech, right? So I know, I understand the ups and downs. You are doing a tremendous service. You deserve to be paid at the top of things that get paid for to do stuff. Like I'm even saying is you should get paid more because the average for American vet techs is only 36 to $44,000 on average, or about 17 bucks an hour or more, which to me seems really low, but this isn't about my opinion. If you are a vet tech out there, you are doing amazing work and I think that you deserve more. But with that said, if you wanna be a vet, and if you don't mind putting out the $200,000 plus, that's what the average is in the States from what I read for my research, then you can make a lot more money. We're talking 80 to 125 grand a year on average in the US, and it can go up uh, more than that, right? It depends too, because if you own your practice versus if you don't own the practice, things like that, right? So it really changes. To me, 80 grand to be what is basically a doctor for animals seems a little bit low. I think that also, especially here, like I live in Ontario, Canada, and veterinarians for reptiles do make more money here, like specialty vets. So that might be the same in your country, in your region, wherever it is. Uh, I'm just pulling statistics from the US because they got a lot of people and they like statistics, so it was easy to find. So this is a very mainstream way. You go to high school, you take whatever you need to take in sciences and things like that, and then uh, you get into college or university or however it works where you live, you get a degree, and then you go find a job. So it's pretty like bang, bang, bang. Not saying that it's easy to go through school and stuff. I'm just saying the path is very like linear. Like you understand how to do it, where some of the other things take a little bit more um, creativity, let's say. So let's move on. Number four, and probably the most unrealistic on this list, breeding. Now, I don't say unrealistic because it's unrealistic to make a buck breeding. I just mean on average, I'm not saying you personally, you might be the most dedicated patient person, but on average, especially now, people have short attention spans and they want things immediately. And if you buy something to breed, if you are starting a breeding project, it takes sometimes years for that to get lifted off the ground. So you might buy an animal worth thousands of dollars and it just doesn't really eat that great and it takes a little bit longer and then it's three years before you produce a clutch or longer. Now I do a little bit of breeding, but by no means am I an expert by far. If you want to learn a little bit about say leopard geckos or hognose or ball pythons, I can help you. I've done those things successfully. If you want someone who has been doing it forever and ever and ever, 
go to a mutation creation, uh, Garrett Hartle at Reach Out Reptiles, uh, Brian Barchuk, like there are people in the world who know a lot more than me. But in my experience of the things that I bought, I buy them as babies usually, that's how we start because we don't have a ton of money. If you have a ton of money, it's different, but if you don't, you buy babies, you grow them up, it's a lot cheaper that way, and it takes a long time for them to get to sexual maturity and then you breed them. For example, I bought Ekans the hognose snake. She was $300, I bought her in 2016. I didn't get a clutch from her until 2019. And I had to buy the male also and I bought some other ones. A couple of them didn't even survive. They had a failure to thrive because hognose snakes when they're big. So what I'm trying to say here is to, for the first clutch of eggs, it took me thousands of dollars just for one project. And if you take the advice of someone like a Billy from Mutation Creation, I forget which live stream it was. I remember it went on forever. I was cleaning the reptile room and listening to it like a podcast. And he said, I remember it clear as day. If he had to start all over, had advice for someone trying to breed ball pythons, buy the most expensive male that you can think of, that you can afford, $5,000 male or better, and a bunch of females that can make, produce high quality animals. And that's the way that you're gonna make your money back the quickest, which is insane because most of us don't just have $5,000 laying around to buy an animal because like we said before, animals get sick and die. $5,000 on an animal is really expensive. Now with that said, everything does have a price, but you shouldn't be putting price on animal lives. I get it, right? I get it. If you have a $5,000 snake or a $5 snake, they should get the exact same amount of care, the exact same amount of vet visits if they need it. I'm not trying to say some snakes' lives are worth more than others, just some are worth literally more money than others. So this is a long-winded way to say breeding is a lot harder than most people think it is. I made a whole playlist right here for breeding if you want to watch what I know about it. And like I said before, there's a lot of great channels out there that can really teach you how if you're interested, but patience is key. You're not making money this year, next year, or the year after. It's gonna take a while. Oh, and to be super realistic about it before we move on, you also see dead animals when you're a breeder. It just, it's part of it. It can be tough. Okay, for let's, let's move on. Number three, educator or zookeeper. I'll put them together because zookeepers in a lot of ways, especially if you run tours at your zoo, are educators. Or I kind of have it in my mind, like when I was a kid, I was in kindergarten and our librarian had a husband who ran an animal sanctuary, a reptile sanctuary, and they brought in animals. They brought in ball pythons, all kind of tortoises. And I remember that's when I fell in love with animals. I've always wanted to do this, but I had no traction on the channel until <laughs> Well, you know what's going on in the world right now. So I've never been able to do this. I've never even done a show, a program, birthday party, whatever. But that's kind of what I'm thinking. If you can work at a zoo or uh, say a reptarium, serpentarium type place and educate people that way, or you start your own business with your animals and you go to birthday parties and schools and things like that and you teach people about reptiles, you can make money this way. I don't think you can make a ton of money this way looking at what people charge. It just seems like, especially with the overhead too, because what most people don't tell you, at least where I live and I'm sure most of the US, um, you gotta have insurance because even if it's like a corn snake that bites a kid, well, you know how the US is, right? Like you guys sue over everything. I'm only half kidding, but seriously, it is something to consider. So there is overhead. It's not free to run. So you're not gonna get rich doing this, but you could make a living doing this, especially if you branched out and maybe hired other people, or you can just work at a reptile zoo or something like that. Oh, and one of the main things that would be awesome about working with a reptile zoo is you could work with a bunch of different species that you don't actually have to own. You don't actually have responsibility for. So that's pretty awesome too. Number two probably also unrealistic. Social media. So I'm talking about things like TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. If there's anything, I'm not an expert, but if there's anything I know a little bit about it to this, I am very lucky. Don't get me wrong, I know it. I know it could be taken away in a heartbeat. I am very lucky to do this for a living. If you asked me when I was eight, Adam, what do you want to do? I would have told you I want to be a stand-up comic. He works there, he's a professional phone haver. Right? <laughs> so what do you have? And I want to talk about reptiles on the TV. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Kind of, it's the internet, but same sort of thing. So I think that it's totally possible if you want to do this or a better version of this, you can. I have no training on how to make videos, on how to script videos and how to edit, nothing. I just picked up a camera one day because someone said I should and it turned into my job. So although it seems easy, it's not. It's taken me three years to get to this point where I can make cinematic videos and people like them and people watch them. 
but they used to look like this. Colder than a mother-in-law's heart out here, but it's breeding season. Reptiles are fornicating, which means they gotta eat. That's weird. Now, with that said, three years I've been doing this. I started this in January 2019. So it's now February, right? So we're talking about... So we're talking about 37 months later, and I make a living doing this, right? I've been doing this for a living for over a year. So in less than two years, you can go from nothing to literally this being your job. Whereas say if you were a vet tech, you'd be in school for those two years or maybe more in places you need to go to school to be a vet tech. So just for comparison, but also there's people who start and never get into a place where they can even make a dime. So it is something that might be a pipe dream or that's what I was told when I started this, but it is possible to do and it is rewarding. But anyway, the reason I went on this tangent about how I did it is just as an example. I always watch examples of things that I want to do from other people and how they did it. How did they accomplish it? Because I think that's part of what social media influencers are for. Or part of our responsibility in a way is to let people know, hey, if you want to do this, it's possible. This is how to do it and not create unnecessary barrier to entry. If you have a little bit of a brain and a smartphone and an internet connection, you can literally make videos. If it's TikTok, Instagram, whatever. And I think Instagram's another thing too that I'm not really that good at. I'd love if you followed me, but I'm not, I'm not good at it. I post pictures every day. But some people literally make a living doing it. Or TikTok, which seems like I'm a little bit, am I too old for TikTok? Life is so fast. Why do you get so old so fast? But there's great channels. Mason Barnes comes to mind. Uh, Catalia is a, that's like, crazy how successful she's been. And obviously like the videos are amazing. So there's really great examples of that also. I don't even really know where I'm going with this. I'm just kind of rambling, but I do this for a living. And if you told me four years ago, this is what I'd be doing, I would call you a liar. So if you think it's not possible, it definitely is. And this whole segment has been like to motivate you, whatever you want to do in life, you can do. Take over everything. Okay, that was a lot of talking. Number one in the most realistic option, in my opinion, Supplies, selling supplies. So I'm talking about uh, driftwood and cork bark and terrariums and uh, substrate and even feeders, things like that. I think that is probably the most realistic because you don't have to stock animals or get animals to breed. You don't have to create videos for an audience and maybe they like them, maybe they don't. So like I'm saying, nothing is easy on this list. There is nothing worth pursuing that is easy. I'm not trying to say that. I'm just saying this is the most realistic because if you want say animals in your shop or your warehouse or whatever, you can have a small number of reptiles that are just pets in a way that you can show off your products with. So you probably have to be good at marketing, Instagram, a website, things like that, but you don't need a ton of animals. And that is awesome. It is really expensive to feed as many animals as I have. Uh, the hydro bill came today and I just about had a cow. So there's a bunch of pros and cons for each one. I just think that this is probably the most realistic one because you can start in your garage with a website. And speaking of websites, a great way to start is through today's sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace gives people a powerful and beautiful online platform from which to create a website. And to really tie it all in, you can actually display posts from social media on your Squarespace website. That's something that I do on my own website. You can create a community on your Squarespace website with full integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, likes. You can use their powerful blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts too. So go to squarespace.com for a free trial and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash Wiccans to save 10% off your first website purchase or domain. All right, that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. I would love to hear it from you. Do you agree with this list? Is there other ways that you make money that I didn't talk about? Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing and you know about the animal that's making noise up there right now. Thank you so much for as little as a dollar a month. You can get discounts on the merch, extra content. You're gonna see this reptile room tour before everybody else. So for as little as a dollar a month, Patreon is what I'm trying to say. Okay, because I do videos twice a week, that means I'll see you on Thursday or Monday. Today's Thursday, so Monday, I'll see you Monday. See you on Monday. <laughs>